If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. And if you need any code cards, make sure you check out Potown Store for automatic email delivery and use code TABLEMONTH for 5% off all your purchases. If you're from Europe, MealyBotsGaming.com is a great option to get your cards from. They have all sorts of sealed products, merchandise, and all the sets available from Pokemon Sun and Moon upwards, including the latest Hidden Fate set. Don't forget to use Tailmon code when checking out to get a further 5% off from your final purchase. Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to TG Worlds 2020. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are continuing our coverage from the regionals and special event that happened this past weekend and now we have the top 8 deck list from Atlantic City. Malamar ended up uh, doing well against all odds in a best of 3 format. Michael Catron ended up getting top 8 with this. Um, very standard list with a couple of interesting twists. So this is your good old run-of-the-mill um, Malamar. It only has three Jirachis, which is surprising. I definitely like to run for myself just to maximize the chances of starting with because you do have a bunch of other basic Pokemon like your Athena, Esper, Espion, Deoxys, especially Muse, Mimikyu, Ditto, and the Inkei. So I feel like with four Jirachi you are much better off um, or slightly better off trying to start with it, but Michael Catron went a step further and he's playing a second Mew in the list. Now, why you ask? Well, number one, <clears throat> Mew is pretty important in terms of uh, preventing things like Nagana Delt's Venom Shot and Picarom's Tackle GX attack from demolishing your bench, so having two deadly helps with um, not only prizing issues, but also you'll find it naturally more times. Therefore, you don't have to spend a Mr. Treasure searching for the Mew. You can spend that Mr. Treasure searching for those very valuable Inkays and Malamars. And then also, its Psy Power Attack allowing you to put three damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like can be pretty handy because combined with Shrine of Punishment, Distortion Door, and Spell Tax, you'll actually become a sort of weird spread deck. Now, he also ended up adding a Giratina Prism Star, which I'm very surprised about. Um, it does go well with Radiant Forest, I guess, because you can get Psychics into your hand, and therefore you can take advantage of the Chaotic Star ability. When you bench the Giratina Prism Star, you can attach two Psychic Energy cards to it from your hand, and then with a Psychic Recharge, you should be able to fulfill the Crisis Dive 160 damage attack. 160 damage is definitely a decent number to be hitting, and can sometimes surprise opponents who might think they are out of range of the damage from Shadow Impact, <clears throat> when in reality this extra boost of 30 damage can actually make a big, big difference. Of course we have the Dene and Espion Deoxys to target down the bench, and we have our 5, essentially 4 line of Malamar along with Mimikyu for some cool copycat shenanigans. Other than that we have pretty standard supporters and everything for Lily, for Cynthia, for treasure for Pokecom, nothing special there. However, he did end up running two copies of Shrine of Punishment. Um, <clears throat> most Malmer decks are now running extra stadiums, and as I mentioned in previous um, Mew Mew videos and whatnot, the stadium wars are definitely in full swing to the point where some decks are running six stadiums, some decks are running five stadiums plus a Marshadow. So, this is a very clear example of um, this trickling to pretty much every deck. And some decks are opting to play Dull Power Plant to shut up Jirachi GX and be able to basically one hit KO Mew Mew GXs um, with Giratina. But Shrine of Punishment is a little bit more well rounded in terms of hitting pretty much every single deck out there, every single tacting deck out there. So, pretty nice deck that I'm sure Michael found super useful throughout his tournament run. So, let's jump into the ladder and give this deck a try. Yeah. And see what it does. Now I'm very surprised at the ladder rewards there. It seems to be focused on expanded. We do have some expanded tournaments coming up, but I don't know. I'm just I'm very surprised to be seeing that. Very, very surprised to be seeing that. Alright, so 
so so so King our guy 274 is choosing who goes first obviously he will be choosing himself unless he's playing um, green strategy that's when you consider maybe going second don't think that's gonna be the case though definitely don't think that's gonna be the case all right so I do start Jirachi pretty nice pretty pretty nice every time you start Jirachi you feel so much more comfortable Right, so much more comfortable with your hand, with what you're trying to do. We see a point ball, so we're probably up against Placephalon, I'd imagine. Should be up against Placephalon. We'll have to see though, but I would be very surprised if it's anything other than Placephalon. Ah, uh, it's actually Quagnac. <laughs> Never mind, it's actually Quagnac. We are going to benefit from the Radiant Forest, that's really, really nice for us. Really, really nice for us. <clears throat> um, I was going to say, uh, yeah. Probably checking its prices with the reinforce, always good to take advantage of that. And then we ourselves have not the greatest hand. Um, we are going to look into the next eight cards, basically our top deck, the Acrobite and the Stellar Wish to find ourselves a draw supporter. Ideally, Lily probably going to end up being, um, well, no, not probably. We have the exact same one, so <laughs> never mind. Not probably, hopefully we find one of the two, right? Ideally, Lily, I'm happy with Cynthia. And look at my opponent, very non-talently just discarding supporters, whereas we would give up anything for a single one. All right, so. There's a Lily, triple Boy Bowl, however, and no Wooper in sight before the Lily. Did get a pretty good Lily, though. We're gonna see the, ooh, the Espion Deox is tagged. A very nice tag for my opponent in that deck. That's definitely not something you would expect to see in this particular deck, but um, potentially a very nice card to have. And then this is just amazing. This Lily is a fantastic draw right here. Because now, I actually, I have two Psychic Sprites, that's good to know, but now I actually, right, I actually, I'm gonna Acrobite before I treasure. Uh, yeah, I'll keep the Recycle Energy, that's really nice. Um, wow, that Espion Deoxys actually means trouble for us. I mean, I don't expect, not that guy, I don't expect my opponent to be able to pull off the six energy attack, though he might. Um, so who gets the damage? That's the important question. I feel like if I manage to stream spell tags, there might be merit to just getting rid of the Nagnadel, I mean the Quagsire, sorry, not the Nagnadel. And then I'll put the damage here. He's gonna, it doesn't really matter which one he evolves or not. And this is just a fantastic start. Being able to Lily for six into a Stellar Wish, which is honestly not that great anymore, purely because I whiffed not only an extra Malamar, which I don't need to get a KO, but this is rough for sure. This is actually rough. Okay, so do I expect my opponent to get a knockout next turn? Probably not. Probably not though it is possible. It would have to be with Quaxar and then I would just immediately retaliate. So I'm not super worried about that. So I'm just gonna grab the Acrobite here. I lose my Drachi, I lose my Drachi. It's not a big deal. So then I'll Acrobike. Jeez, uh, another tough Acrobike. I feel like I should keep... Uh, well, I, what I mean is I feel like I should establish another Inkay this turn. 
rather than keep the Malamar. I do have more Malamars, access to more Malamars, none are prized. Three should be enough for this particular matchup. I'll actually go ahead and grab the Ditto. We'll actually go ahead and grab the Ditto and then... I mean, if my Jirachi gets KO'd, so be it. I'll still need the switch. I won't be able to sell it, which it's not the end of the world because I'll be training a Jirachi for a Quagsire, so I'm happy with that trade. I am honestly pretty happy with that trade. Um, well, I, okay. So I should not have grabbed Ditto, especially after seeing the Espeon Deoxys. Um, because now there was a chance that my opponent went GX attack, KO in K, KO Ditto, and that would have been terrible. But now he's committed a Water Energy to the Poipole, so that's definitely not going to happen this turn. So we are safe for now. But that actually could have been horrendous for us. And in this potentially non-GX battle, we are going to be the ones to initiate and get the KO. And another really cool thing is that if I have evolved Malamars on my bench, I'm not super worried about the Espeon Deoxys purely because even if my opponent pulls it off, if he targets down, if he targets down the Malamars and is not playing a Jirachi GX, I just get three prizes with Shadow Impact. So it's gonna be a lose lose situation for my opponent to use it, unless it's for his last like two prizes or something, which is a nice option to have, right? Definitely a nice option to have. But I do feel against Malamar the. Magic Open Weather is definitely stronger, unless your opponent is playing double mute like I am. Okay. Right. Alright. Pretty good deal here, I'd say. I draw a chance of surviving. <clears throat> I don't mind getting rid of this person. And then I will just go ahead and set up double Malamar. Is that better than. Yeah, I think double Malamar right here is better. Because if my opponent goes double custom catcher, then that means my Giratina stayed alive and powered up. So I don't really see how my opponent could possibly end up winning here. I really don't see it. So I'm. Getting a Malmar, getting the Psychic, thinning a little bit before I Stella Wish into a very nice Cynthia right here. Wish I could attach the spell tag, <clears throat> but it's fine. I will commit the energy, however. Attach the Psychic. Maybe there was merit to ground the Lily instead because I do have the switch already. And then I'm gonna Cynthia, and then if I don't get like an escape board or something to be able to retreat this guy. I will simply um, Psychic Recharge onto the Jirachi, so I have the Retreat, and I have the Recycle Energy all the time, so even if Giratina goes down, this should be perfectly fine. I will Treasure White the Radiant Forest, I don't see my opponent playing a different Stadium, maybe Ultra Space, not the biggest of deals, it's not like I need energy really. And then we get the first KO. And I'll put the damage onto the Jirachi. This means an Agnadel can out here the Jirachi. I don't think it that matters. Probably on the Malmar would have been less impactful. It's generally fine. It won't make a big difference. It will not make a big, big difference. Alright. So my opponent does indeed promote the Quagsire. <laughs> now that's a mistake. But, I mean, I'm not gonna complain about the free prize. I'll be very surprised if my opponent actually has something to prevent this Ditto. This just means we're getting farther and farther and farther ahead. He has to commit for energy, which are then getting wiped off the board. There's the Hydro Bomb. Very easy decision on where to place the damage. 
very, very easy decision on where to play to damage. So I get out prize before my turn even begins, and then I get another prize off of the Quaxar. So in this non-GX battle, I am already two prizes ahead. So I'll definitely do this, and then I do have the switch. I feel like I'd rather save that. I'm so far ahead that I don't need to Stella Wish. I actually do not even need to Stella Wish. I'll just go ahead and do this. And like, for example, uh, another um, spell deck would be nice, but it's really not necessary at this point. It is generally not necessary. I don't know why I clicked Dragon Force. I meant to click on Malamar. Sure, I'll discard. It's like a good sign. I definitely meant to click on Malamar, though. In my mind, I was thinking, okay, maybe I Pokecon for Giratina and then Dragon Forest it away. But then what I ended up doing was clicking on the silly Brilliant Forest because I was thinking farther than my actions were allowing at the point. So this turn I can put the 40 damage here, keep my Malwars on damage for whatever reason, um, put a potential SP on Deoxys play later on. 80 damage will not KO my Giratina. Spit Poison and then 80 damage will, but that's gonna be game over pretty much. Now it's just a matter of going through the motions and making sure I do not misclick, which I have been known for. Now I'm not known for misclicking, but I can sometimes just not quite click the right cards or something. Alright. So yeah, seems like my bonus plan is to spit poison. Seems like my opponent's plan is to spit poison here. Gengar guy, I would really appreciate it if you just hurried up a little bit. This is one of the issues I guess sometimes with Malamar. Not only do you have to do a lot of clicking, which can be annoying sometimes, um, it also means you have to like really go through the motions and since your damage output is essentially 130 for most of the time, Games go by slower, which does make it a slightly weaker deck in best of three, 50 minutes, right? It's not best of, it's not that it's weak when you're playing three games, it's simply that um, it's weaker in a best of three setting that's limited to 50 minutes. U-turn board, and there's this bit poison finally. Took a while, but all good. Ah, uh, sure, the spell tag is nice. And then, do you need, I mean, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Give me Giratina. I guess I could have been powering up the Espion Deoxys. Just to potentially outright win. I, I don't think it's necessary. Just go ahead and distortion door. Only two bench Pokemon left for my opponent. I'll do this. I'll do this. And it's crazy to think that you can actually end up just outright winning in a game where um, where you're not even still wishing. Like that's how far ahead I am. Spit poison it doesn't really matter. I'll definitely, like, if my opponent decides to not attack me, um, to stop my spell attack from activating, it doesn't, the spell attack doesn't really make a big difference here. It doesn't really. Let's see, Poke Gear, Ray Cynthia. Try 
charging off, attaching. I I really just don't know what my opponent's playing towards. He must realize that he's dead, right? He must realize that. Not even Magic Arbon Whaler does the trick for him anymore here. Not even Magic Arbon Whaler does the trick. Not even that. Not even that. 10 damage counters, he can KO Giratina and Jirachi. Sure, he doesn't get um, spell attack, but then I just come up with a Giratina attack and win. I'm like, I have game on board. It doesn't even matter what I have in my hand because the recycle energy goes back into my hand after Giratina gets knocked out. So then I just attach it and that's the game. Okay, so he's trying to go for the 20 damage counters. <laughs> so he does end up playing around the spell tag. It's completely fine. Completely, completely fine. See the Pokegum. The loss of energy means my opponent will not be able to win next turn. It does mean he will not be able to win next turn. I don't know, I think I'd rather get damage off the board from the Guarantina even if it means my spell tag doesn't activate because I'm not relying on the spell tags to win this match. I'm certainly not relying on spell tags. Ah, oh, such a long turn for my opponent though. Rain Splash 20, then the poison does it. It's completely fine. Get back the energy. Promote this guy. I went and says, well played. I hope that's not a preemptive. Uh, well played where he thinks he's won or I'm missing something and I've lost. I really doubt it. There's no way he gets four prizes next turn. Absolutely no way. Tool is a shrine. It's completely fine. And then we'll go retreat. Anyone, like, nah, I don't need to bench them you. I really don't. There's no way he gets four prizes. There's no way he gets six energy. Let's start off by that, right? There's absolutely no way he gets six energy onto the board. Even if he did, he would get 20 damage counters, right? Three and nine, that's 12. Doesn't even, can't afford to knock out three Pokemon. So it's either Dome Malmar or Giratina and Malmar or Giratina and Jirachi, or, yeah, it's just, it's not happening. Three Pokemon isn't happening, four is literally impossible. Are you really going to KO my active and then force me to click everything? Right. So yeah, I mean, this is what you aim to do with Malamar every time. Of course, sometimes things can go wrong and will go wrong with this deck. Um, not all the time though, not all the time. And when it flows, it flows very nicely. The issue is when you get those awkward starting hands where you don't have Jirachi or you can't find a supporter. Because in the end, three Jirachis and eight supporters, that's kind of thin in the trainers department, I'd say. And like in the consistency department, you do have triple acrobat as well. But eh, it's definitely, definitely a little iffy. Definitely a little iffy on my part, on my behalf. And then no reset stamp, I feel, is also questionable. Definitely feel no reset stamp is a little bit questionable here. Uh, find the double custom catcher. Doesn't change anything at all. You see the Keldeo. So I guess if he retreats into the Keldeo, we need the Espion Deoxys of the Stellar Wish or Cynthia. Try and go for their change. Really taking his time. 
But yeah, I think that's going to be Malabar for today. He trades into a Keld. Okay, so I need the Espion Deoxys now. There's a bunch of things I can play for my hand though. I can reinforce the way of basic, then I can replace the shrine. I can. Uh, actually, I should not attach the energy. Oh, is he just gonna knock me out? Alright, that's fine. Doesn't change anything. Doesn't change my win condition. Sonic Edge. Still can't get three prizes next turn with this guy though. Still can't. Thank you, deck. Thank you for not making this any more, any longer than it needs to be. Ooh, I could win with style, right? No, I can't. I can't win with style. Oh no, I actually can. So I get the Retina Prism. I switch into this guy, retreat, get back. The recycle, then I bench the Giratina, attach the Psychic from hand, double Psychic recharge. Well, no, I bench the Giratina before I retreat. Yeah, okay, let's do the fancy way. <laughs> let's do the fancy way. All right, so step number one is bench that person and attach that, right? And then, sure, let's still wish just in case I messed up. <laughs> Delvish just in case I messed up and then okay so I go switch and then I go psychic recharge the two psychics in the discard pile so yeah this psychic I really wanted to get that psychic out of there oh no this costs what am I doing this cost this doesn't cost um that's not free cheap <laughs> that is actually not uh, it's not triple psychic plus the colorless cost. I was about to mess up really badly. And now I didn't win because I got fancy. <laughs> and I'm still gonna win, but... I'm still... Oh, I hope. <laughs> I hope I didn't mess this up. I'm pretty sure I didn't. Is my opponent running switch? See so running on our U-turn board. Doesn't have enough energy in play to retreat and use the GX for three prizes. Would 20 damage counters be enough now? Five. Oh, it would be actually. Oh. Does he have a tail Liza? Wow, so I got way too fancy and I might have lost because of this. Oops. <laughs> Oopsie daisies. I got way too fancy there. I completely disregarded the fact that this person needed four psychics and not a recycle energy, not a colorless energy. If I put out a switching card, he beats me. Five damage counters on the active, nine on the bench, three on the Drachi. That's three prizes. I almost messed this up. Thankfully, I didn't. Just because I got fancy. Just because I got fancy. So now, if he kills Giratina. Ooh. Did I mess up again? No. Uh, no, I didn't. I went with Mew on the, on the dude. Wow. <laughs> I was very scared there for a second. I was very scared there for a second. So I'll do this, I'll bench the Mew. I actually don't have another, yeah. Well, I did have another way to switch. That was silly though. That was silly. I almost cost myself the game. Oh, and this guy cost two to retreat. I didn't even realize. <laughs> I thought it cost it four. Jeez, I'm very confused on my cards today. I'm very confused on my cards. All good though, all good. All good. Never punished, right? <laughs> Never punished. All right. So I wanted to showcase that, and then it almost cost me the game. 
all good though. I feel like this shows how the deck can flow very nicely. Sometimes it does, but then other times you just get those hands where you're like, why am I playing this deck? What did I do with my life, right? <laughs> it just gets really, really awkward. But thankfully that was not the case today. So that will be all for today's video. Only one game. Um, I do want to record a few more, well, one more video before I'm done for today, so that's why a little bit shorter, hope you guys don't mind. But I feel like the the one game videos have been like quality games and um, even-ish, right? And this one I almost showed you how to lose from a winning position, so don't do that. <laughs> that will be all for me guys, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to leave a like, and I'll catch you tomorrow in a brand new video. Bye!